Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Thanks for watching today. We've got another segment of 10 Minutes with the Tech, where basically we've got a team behind me that's gathering all these questions that come in. It's impossible for me as a one person trying to make a living as an RV tech out here to also spend hours and hours uh, trying to answer everybody's questions individually. So we threw them all together in a fishbowl and we started a new series where we take 10 minutes at a time and we go through answering all of your questions. So um, let's jump right in. Let's start with Tom here. So Tom's got a question and it uh, looks like it involves... Um, the converter, I did a converter job. So he's got a question on the converter job. Um, on that bare copper ground to chassis, was that grounded to AC ground bus bar or the frame? So let's talk about grounds in an RV. Um, this is gonna be very different than grounds and neutrals in a house, okay? So the ground, we're talking ground, not neutral. Um, so let's, let's be very clear on what I'm talking about here. And I'm talking about RVs, not houses. In an RV, the power, the neutral and the ground should always be separate. The neutral and the ground should never be bonded together in an RV. That happens at the pedestal. In a house, the neutrals and grounded are bonded together at the bus bar in the service panel. That is not what you do in an RV. If you are working on your RV and for some reason you're in that service panel and you notice that that neutral and that ground are bonded together, take that out. That's You don't want that. So on this converter, that ground could have been bonded to the ground bus bar in the service panel or the frame of the RV. The frame and the ground bus bar should all be the same. Having said that, uh, in the electronics, we learned that you want all grounds to be at a single point, okay? Um, otherwise, you might have some resistance. You might have um, some noise that might be a generation of where noise might be coming from. But if the entire frame of your RV is metal, then there's your ground. Um, so to answer your question, was it, was that ground wire bonded to the frame or the ground bar in the bus panel? As long as it's the ground side, it's fine. It would be incorrect to ground that to the neutral bar. Okay. The only place that the ground and neutral should ever touch is at the pedestal. Okay. And at the pedestal or thereabouts, uh, there's a single point. You, only, you always want one single point of ground. So there's that. Okay. So there's Tom's question. Uh, let's see here. We've got Phil has a question on the breakaway cable. Um, uh, the battery. Okay, so basically I'm reading through this and um, the battery, just to be clear, the battery. Ha okay, so I did a video on a breakaway cable and that was a fun one. I remember that one. Uh, it had a lot of background highway noise in it. Sorry about that. I'm getting better at my my. I've got a lavalier now, which before I didn't. And so we're investing more in cameras and lighting and and all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, but um, I was, I needed to replace it on my RV and I'm like, well, hey, let's, let's make a video out of this. And um, next thing you know, we made a video and it's doing pretty well. So um, Phil's question is, um, do the batteries need to be charged? Now I'm assuming that the battery needs to be charged on the trailer, right, Phil? Is that what you're asking? Um, will the brakes not engage if the battery is lower dead? Um, so I want to make sure I understand your question, because if you're plugged into your tow vehicle, then usually the tow vehicle is providing power to the brake circuit, okay? If you are not connected to your tow vehicle, then it's the battery on board the trailer that is providing the emergency power to your, your brakes, okay? The power's got to come from somewhere. It's not going to, through osmosis, make it work. So if you're, if, if you're not connected to the tow vehicle, and you're just dealing with just the trailer itself. If that battery is dead, then my question is, where's the power gonna come from to energize those brakes? Each brake consumes about three amps of power. So if you have uh, a one axle trailer, that's six amps of power. If you have a two axle trailer, that's 12 amps of power. So that amperage has to come from somewhere. So if your battery is lower dead, um, then the, then the brakes might work right away. You might get a little bit of a surface charge out of them, but they're not going to be long enough to actually really lock up those rotors, which is what you want to happen if for some reason it should fall apart. Um, which is why on a lot of these trailers, you'll see these little, sometimes they're motorcycle batteries or whatever that are connected to, to just, you just need enough to stop that trailer. So, so Phil, I hope that answers your question. I think that, um, uh, I think I answered it correctly, but if you're connected to the tow vehicle, then it's the tow vehicle's battery that's juicing up those things. But um, so hope that makes sense. Got another question here on um, power problem leads to converter diagnosis and replacement. Okay, so um, 
So here is the question. I have a problem with my power. Uh, if I turn off the 30 amp main breaker, okay, so this would be like basically unplugging your RV from the pet from the shore power. Um, if I turn off the 30 amp main breaker, I have battery power and my lights and refrigerator will work. Okay, um, I buy that. That's good. When I turn, when I turn it on, the microwave and the air conditioner will work. So the question was, I, I kind of read it, and it's it's here's here's what I'm getting. So when he's connected to shore power, his uh, microwave and his air conditioner will work. When he's uh, so when he's connected to shore power, his microwave, his refrigerator, his oh, I need to circle these things. So when he is connected to shore power, his microwave, air conditioner, refrigerator, and lights all work. Yay! When he disconnects from shore power, then only the lights and only the refrigerator will work, but the microwave and the air conditioner will not work. Um, and I would say that is a, so he's wondering if his breaker is bad. Uh, could the, could the breaker be bad? I don't think so. I, if, if I'm understanding your question correctly, that is exactly how it's supposed to work. Um, because your lights, these lights up above me here in this RV, the lights and your refrigerator are all DC circuits. They're going to get their power from their battery. Okay, so you're not connected to shore power. And so your battery is a storage device and it's stored all these electrons. And basically your lights and your refrigerator, now let's be clear, your refrigerator is not working on 12 volts unless it's got a 12 volt heating element in it. Um, but the brain, the lower, since the late 80s, or since the early 80s, all refrigerators started to need 12 volts on that lower control board. So your refrigerator probably works with the lights on the inside of your refrigerator, and it's probably working on LP if it if it needs to work. Now it might be satisfied with with its cooling and it doesn't need to turn on, but you might see the light in your refrigerator on and the eyebrow board on your refrigerator. There's one. This is a refrigerator, so I'm pointing to it, but you can't see it. So and then when you so I don't think there's anything wrong with your breaker. I, I don't. If you're turning the breaker off, then yes, your microwave will not work because a microwave is a 120 volt shore power appliance. And your air conditioner is also a shore power, shore power 120 volt appliance. So you, in your RV, you actually have three electrical systems in your RV. The first electrical system is what you get for your blinkers and your brake lights and your clearance lights. That's one whole electrical circuit in your RV. We'll call it chassis wiring. Then you have the 12 volt wiring, which we call house wiring, which is your, your lights. That's all 12 volts, comes from the battery. Your lights, um, all your, your air conditioner brain needs 12 volts. Um, your refrigerator brain needs 12 volts. Your furnace brain needs 12 volts. Your entire furnace will run on 12 volts. Your water heater has a brain that runs on 12 volts. Your LP detector runs on 12 volts. Oh boy. Um, I'll stop with that. So most basically you can unplug your RV and go be in the forest and it'll work on 12 volts, but your microwave, your air conditioner, those are 120 volt appliances. They do require a generator to be running or an inverter, which is getting power from your battery or connected to shore power because those are bigger AC only appliances. So hope that helps, but I think your breaker's fine. Um, let's see, I might have time for one more. Let's see here. Um, I think I've got all my questions done. So yeah, we're going to finish early today. Folks, if this was helpful, give us a thumb up and let us know. Leave your comments down below on any of these questions that we ask. Um, we really do appreciate you watching. Thanks for supporting us. If you can spare five bucks a month, we'd love to have you join us on Patreon. It does take some time and effort and energy and it takes, we've got a staff of five or six that are depending on the day and who's available to put all this together. We're digging into fishbowl, grabbing out some questions and I sure would like to buy them lunch or, or, or compensate them some way uh, to help the, the say thank you for their time to help make this available for you. So um, happy camper, same RV work. So we appreciate that. We've got some other really exciting repair walkthrough videos coming out as well. And um, as always, happy camper, same RV work. So from uh, Port Angeles, Washington, this is Darren signing off until the next video.